In this video, we are going to see PN junction diodes small signal model. I have shown the diode symbol here where the voltage across the diode is VD, current flowing through the diode is ID and the diode current equation is shown here and eta here is called the ideality factor. We have seen this in electronic devices where we discussed in detail the current voltage characteristics of the PN junction diode. The current voltage characteristics are shown here. In reverse bias, it's a reverse saturation current flowing which is fairly independent of the voltage across the diode and in the forward bias the current is increasing exponentially as we increase the voltage across the diode. So the first thing that we notice here is the IV characteristics of a PN junction diode are non-linear. So let's say if you have a circuit where we are applying a DC voltage of let's say VDC here and we have a current limiting resistor R and the voltage across the diode is VD. Now obviously the current that flows here we can say is IDC. Now we can write the expression for IDC is equal to VDC minus the voltage across the diode VD over the current limiting resistor R. Now looking at this equation we can say as we have the IV characteristics shown here for the diode when VD is equal to 0 IDC will be equal to VDC over R. So let's say that point is somewhere here on the IV characteristics graph. On this line VD is 0 and let's say when VD is equal to VDC then IDC will be 0. So let's say that point is somewhere here. In this equation VDC is a fixed value and R is a fixed value. The voltage across the diode and the current flowing through the circuit are directly related. And they are related in a linear fashion. Hence we can connect these two dots shown on the IV characteristics. So let me make a note that this is equal to VDC and this point is equal to VDC over R. Now wherever this line, this line is an indication of this equation which is IDC is equal to VDC minus VD over R and wherever this line intersects the current voltage characteristics of the PN junction diode that will be the corresponding voltage across the diode. We will say this is VD and the current that would flow through the diode will be ID. In fact, that will be equal to the actual current flowing through the circuit IDC. Now let's say on top of this DC, we are going to apply an AC signal. So let me take that circuit with uh, DC plus AC. Now let's call this as VDC applied and the AC source is VI which is equal to VM sine omega t. In fact, if the diode was a linear element, we could have done analysis independently DC analysis separately and AC analysis separately and we can add both of them to find what will be the response of the diode. The voltage across the diode and the current flowing through the diode. But in fact as we have seen that the characteristics of the diode are non-linear. But obviously the current that would flow will have both DC component and AC component. So let me say that the current that flows is IDC plus some current small ID indicating the AC current flow and the voltage across the diode here would be some voltage corresponding to the DC plus the small voltage that is corresponding to the AC signal. In fact, this can be assumed only if the signal that we have here, the VM is small. So let's see that. Let's say because of this small AC signal that is applied on top of the DC signal, here we are going to have a small change in the voltage due to which there will be correspondingly a current change. So if we look at the characteristics now around this DC biasing point, let me call this as a Q point, which we are going to call as quiescent point, which means silent, which is not going to change. So the DC signal is going to be something which is constant, not changing. Hence, this point also will be constant. On top of it, the AC signal is applied. Hence, because of the small change in the 
voltage across the diode, there would be a small change in the current flowing through the diode. But if you observe here that around this Q point or the DC biasing point, if you look at this nonlinear characteristics, the slope along this curve around this DC biasing point is going to be constant, which means this nonlinear characteristics around a DC biasing point or Q point for a very small AC signal or very small voltage change can be taken as linear. Just like an example, if you take earth, it's spherical, but when we look at land where we stand, it looks very flat. Just because of the fact that we are looking at a very small portion of earth. So if you look at the nonlinear characteristics of any device, if you look at a DC biasing point, around that point within a very small region of change, the characteristics would look linear. Hence we can say around the DC biasing point, this device is going to work like a linear device given the fact that the input applied AC is going to be small. Hence we always take a small signal as a reference and then do analysis. Only then it will be linear. Of course when it is linear we can do DC analysis separately, AC analysis separately and club them together to find the overall response. Now of course the change in the voltage across the diode let's say that delta Vd will result in a small change in delta Id. And of course they are related with the slope that we find around this Q point. So let me say that that, that slope will be equal to delta Id over delta Vd. As the delta Vd and delta Id become small, we can write this as del Id over del Vd. Now the diode current equation can be approximated by neglecting the minus sign there which eventually will become I0 times e power Vd over eta Vt approximately. So hence the partial differentiation of this diode current equation would become del Id over delta Vd will be equal to I0 t power Vd over eta Vt times 1 over eta Vt. So this is the conductance of the diode. Of course, 1 over GD is RD, which can be written as, we know this term is ID, which is the DC current that is flowing through the diode because of the DC biasing. Hence, we can write RD is equal to eta VT over ID. Now, a very important point that is, this RD is a small signal parameter which depends on the DC biasing. So basically this ID is a DC bias current that is flowing through the diode. Let's say to understand this better, let's say the DC biasing point was somewhere here, the slope would have been like this. Of course, this slope is less than the slope that we have at the Q point we are talking about here. And let's say if the voltage across the diode has increased, then if you take the slope here, it would be even higher. So obviously the RD or GD would depend on the DC biasing that we have, which means the small signal diode resistance value that we are talking about would depend on the DC biasing point. So now we can say that around the DC biasing point, the circuit can be taken as a linear circuit. Hence, we can do the analysis, DC analysis separately and AC analysis separately. Now here I have shown two diagrams. Number one, that is we can do DC analysis this way. When we do DC analysis, we take all the AC sources to be zero, which means if you have voltage AC source, we'll make the voltage zero, hence it's a short circuit. If you have a current AC source, we'll make the current zero so that it becomes open circuit. Now, when we do AC analysis, we take all the DC sources to be zero, which means if you have DC voltage sources, we'll make voltage equal to zero, then it's a short circuit. Similarly, if you have a current DC source, then we make the current zero so it becomes open circuit. Now here I have left the diode not represented with anything. If you observe here, the diode based on the IV characteristics we have around the Q point, we have modeled the diode to be simply a resistance. So we'll represent the resistance here which will be RD. But one key difference, the way we deal with linear circuits in network theory versus the circuit here 
There we can do DC and AC analysis separately where the parameters of the elements will not depend on the DC biasing point. Whereas here the AC analysis even though we do AC and DC analysis separately the AC equivalent circuit of the device is going to depend on the DC biasing. So that's the most important point to remember that DC biasing point plays a crucial role in deciding the AC parameter values. Now the question is is this diode equivalent model that we are drawing here just as an RD is it enough? But of course the IV characteristics we have seen are static characteristics. When changes are coming in obviously we cannot neglect the capacitance parameters of the diode which means we have to take the capacitance parameters into account. So let me take that here. I am showing here two types of capacitances present in our PN junction diode. One is the diffusion capacitance which is dominant in the forward bias. The other one is the depletion capacitance or transition capacitance. So let me take the biasing point is somewhere here. In which case we have to take the capacitance value present here both of them which should be added to get the resultant capacitance. We know in the forward bias obviously the diffusion capacitance takes the precedence because it will be very high compared to depletion capacitance. If the diode is operating in the reverse bias the depletion capacitance will be dominant hence we take only depletion capacitance. Which means we have to account the capacitance of the diode as well. Let me call that CD the diode capacitance or at times it is called the junction capacitance CJ. Now which means we are saying here that if we have a PN junction diode its small signal model can be represented as a small signal diode resistance in parallel with the capacitance of the diode CD or CJ. At times when you are solving problems as the data corresponding to the capacitance is not given you can neglect the capacitance and just take RD and do the AC analysis. But if you are in reverse bias obviously when we look at the IV characteristics in reverse bias current is fairly independent of the voltage that is across the diode which means the resistance in reverse bias offered by the diode for a AC signal will be infinite. In that case when you are doing analysis of the PN junction diode in reverse bias it's going to be an open circuit for AC analysis. But if the capacitance values are given you have to take the capacitance values that will be depletion capacitance. So keep that in mind and forward bias you will have a RD in parallel with CD. In reverse bias you pretty much have just the capacitance. So let me represent that here. The C is for forward bias and if you had to say for a reverse bias it will be simply a capacitance which is junction capacitance or the diode capacitance which will be in fact it's a depletion capacitance. This is in reverse bias. But of course the entire thing that we have discussed is conceptually but there is a mathematical way of showing it. If guys who are interested you can please continue. If guys who have had enough of it you can actually stop the video at this point and move on to the next video. So coming to the mathematical model we know the diode current equation is I0 times e power Vd or eta Vt minus 1 which can be approximated to I0 times e power Vd over eta Vt. Now we can write that Id is actually a function of Vd. Now we are saying that Vd is going to have some changes that is Vd plus let's say delta Vd which will result in a current change which will be Id plus delta Id. So now as we know this function with the change we can write Id plus delta Id is equal to function of Vd plus delta Vd. Now we can do a Taylor series expansion for this which will be f of Vd plus delta Vd times f dash of Vd plus delta Vd square over 2 factorial times f double dash of Vd plus so on. Now this can be written as f of Vd is nothing but Id which is DC biasing current that we have plus delta Vd times f dash of Vd is nothing but derivation of the diode current equation which can be written as Id over 
eta vt plus the next term that is delta vd square over 2 factorial times f double dash vd will be id over eta vt square plus etc. Now this entire expansion is equal to id plus delta id. Now we can say this id is equal to this id. Now delta id will be equal to this entire expansion. Now when we assume that delta vd is going to be very small, we can say that delta vd tends to become a small signal. Similarly, delta id we can take that to be a small signal. In that case, we can write this expression as id plus small id is equal to capital ID the DC value plus VD times ID over eta VT plus VD square over 2 times ID over eta VT square plus etc. So on. Having assumed VD is small, now we have to see can we neglect the rest of the terms here? If we have to do that, we have to check this term is going to be very small compared to this term. So let me take this is second and this is the first term then we have to say that second term should be very very small compared to first term. Then we will get the definition of what is small signal. So let's see that that is second term is vd square over 2 times id over eta vt square should be very very small compared to vd times id over eta vt. Now we can cancel out vd with square id id eta vt to the square then we can write that vd should be very very small compared to 2 times vt. Now this is the definition for the small signal. Now having said that we are going to satisfy the small signal condition then we can write the equation as capital ID the DC current plus the small signal ID is equal to capital ID plus vd over rd where rd is given by eta vt over id. This is the term that we got when we discussed small signal model conceptually. So looking at this we can say the DC analysis can be done separately and simply the AC analysis can be done separately and we can add them to find the overall response the DC plus AC response. But the most important point to remember is that small signal parameters always depend on the DC biasing values. So here this is DC bias current. By the way, before we move on, obviously when we do DC analysis, we can take the exact diode current equation to solve the circuit. But at times we do substitute the diode with large signal model to make the analysis simple. And then it will be easy to find the current equation. If you like the video, please give a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do subscribe and thank you for watching. See you in the next video.